How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at quantum mechanics and atomic orbitals. So our objectives will be to describe the location of an electron in the quantum model of an atom, including in terms of their quantum numbers. So we're going to get into some quantum stuff. So let's start with this guy, Erwin. Erwin Schrodinger. So he was an Austrian physicist, and this guy loved math. I don't actually know that, but I'm assuming based on all of the work that he must have loved math, right? Which makes him one of the coolest guys ever, because who doesn't love math, right? So he came up with the wave functions. So the wave functions describe the electron's matter wave by incorporating the math for wave-like and particle-like behavior of the electron. So he took these two things and fused them together so we could accurately describe an electron's matter wave. We call these the wave function. So the wave function is this like weird looking symbol. Uh, the probability density is that wave function squared. And the probability density provides information about the electron's location in terms of probability. So if you remember the uncertainty principle, we can't know for sure where an electron is, but using the probability densities, we can describe where you're likely to find it. Right, so we introduce this concept of an electron density. Where are you likely to find electrons? And that's kind of what you're seeing in this image. Where it's yellow, uh, where it's more yellow, that's a higher electron density. That's where you're more likely to find those electrons. So we got to update our understanding. You know, we're all about Bohr for a while, and uh, now we're realizing that some of the things Bohr was saying doesn't uh, doesn't pan out. Some things do, some things haven't. We got to reassess. So Bohr described electrons as being in orbits, right? He had one quantum number to describe the location of electron. It was just the principal energy level. They're in these orbits around the nucleus. But with the quantum mechanical model, we introduce a new term, orbitals. So almost the same word, but no, it's not at all the same word. So we got different terminology. Electrons aren't in orbits like a planet around the sun anymore. We have these things called orbitals which are the solutions to the Schrodinger's equations that give wave functions with specific energies. So each orbital has a specific energy and a specific shape. These are, you know, describing where you're likely to find these electrons. So we have three quantum numbers to describe the location of an electron. There's going to be a fourth one in a future video, but we're going to start with just these three quantum numbers. So here's an analogy, right? If we're, why can't we just say there's the electron? So just like if you're trying to describe where you live to somebody, you need to give them multiple levels of information. You might start with, all right, well, what state do you live in? I live in the state of New York. All right, well, that's not really helping me. That's still a whole region. Well, what town do you live in? You know, what street do you live on? What's your house number? You'll need a similar system for describing the locations of an electron. You know, if where where are you? Well, I, I'm in New York. I'm in Orange County. I'm in this town on this street. I'm in this house. You know, which room am I, am I in? I'm going to keep that a mystery. You know, you won't be able to know that for sure. Uh, so let's talk about the quantum numbers. We're going to talk about three, N, L, and M, L, right? Let's start with N. So N is the principal quantum number. The values for N are some positive integral numbers. So it's got to be this positive whole number. The bigger the number is, the bigger the orbital is, and the further away from the nucleus it is. So when we're talking about where you find an electron, the lower the principal quantum number, the closer to the nucleus you are. Now, all orbitals within the same N are said to be an electron shell. So there might be multiple orbitals in that one electron shell, right? They're all part of the same electron shell. So where N equals 1, electrons are in the first shell. So next quantum number, L, referred to as the azimuthal quantum number. So all orbitals with the same end and L values are referred to as a subshell. So values uh, for L are some positive numbers between 0 and up to n minus 1. So if I'm in the first energy level, uh, n equals 1, there's only one possible L value. It's zero. There's only one subshell for that. If I get into the second energy level, N equals two, there can be two subshells, right? It can be zero or one. We also assign them letters. So if L is zero, that's for the S subshell. If it's one, that's the P subshell. If it's two, that's the D subshell. And if it's three, that's the F subshell. So you would say it just like that. 2P is referred to as the 2P subshell. 
all of the orbitals in the 2p subshell are said to make up the subshell. Now this quantum number is going to define the shape of the orbitals. So that's going to be a whole nother video, but each of these subshells have different shapes to them. So S has a different shape than P, which has a different shape than D, which has a different shape than F, and we'll get more into that in the future. All right, some of them might be spherical. Some might look like a peanut. We got some other interesting shapes. And then the last one we're gonna talk about right now is ML, or the magnetic quantum number. So these values can go anywhere from negative L to positive L and they describe the orientation of orbitals in three-dimensional space. So if, you know, I had an orbital that's kind of shaped like a peanut, you know, well, there's these two lobes. Are they on the X plane? Are they on the Y plane? Are they on the Z plane? How are they oriented in three-dimensional space? And that's what this third quantum number is going to tell you. All right, so possible quantum numbers. Let's take a look, right? So in terms of energy, the first energy level is the lowest. This is going to be the S subshell. So the quantum numbers for this would be 1, 0. And how many orbitals are in this first energy level? There's just one orbital. There's one box. That's what this box is showing. In the second energy level, there's two sublevels. We have the S and we have the P sublevel. Right? So how many orbitals are there in this one? There's four. And you can just count them here. We got the S, we have the P, and we have the D sublevels. Uh, in the third energy level, we have three sublevels. So how many orbitals are there for that? Um, man, I got to count. Look at that. It's nine. So what are the quantum numbers for this one? Well, let's see. If it's in the third energy level, the first number is a three. If it's in the S sublevel, the next number is a zero. And this box right here is also zero. So when we get into the uh, the magnetic quantum numbers, you can draw these boxes, right? This is kind of like a number line. This box would be zero. This would be minus one. This would be minus two, plus one, plus two. You don't have to put the pluses. So if I was talking about this box right here, well, it's in the third energy level. It's in the D sublevel, which is, let's see, zero, one, two, and then which which orbital is it in? Well, it's this box, so it is two. All right, a little practice to go a long way. Let's take a look at some other stuff. Are these numbers possible? If so, which orbital is it? Well, let's start with the first one. Let's see. One, zero, zero. Are those possible numbers? Well, let's see. First energy level, check. That makes sense. Zero sublevel, yeah, that's what I'm calling the first one. I start with zero for the sublevels, so that's doable. And the only possible third quantum number is zero, right? That's going to be my zero. So this, yeah, possible, and it's this one. That is the orbital that those three numbers are describing. All right, well, let's take a look at B. I have second energy level. Sure, I'm looking at this second energy level. Zero sublevel, which is this one right here. That's my S. And it's saying box number one. Uh-oh. Now this box has to be box zero. So this one, not possible. This is an impossible set of quantum numbers. All right, let's take a look at C. I got three, so I'm looking at the third energy level. Awesome. I have two, which brings me to my D sublevel. So, right, zero. Well, this is, yeah, S, P, D. So yeah, I'm talking about over here now. And then it's saying two. Well, again, I treat this like a number line. Zero, minus one, minus two, positive one, positive two. Yeah, this is totally possible. And it's talking about this orbital right there. All right, two comma one comma one. Let's see again, second energy level. Number one sublevel, which is the P sublevel. All right, cool. And box number one, is there a box number one? Well, let's see, this would be zero. That'd be minus one. This would be positive one. Yep. It's talking about this orbital right there. All right. Last but not least, three comma one comma zero. Is that possible? Well, yeah. Let's see. Third energy level. Cool. One brings me to the P sublevel. That works. Is there a zero in there? There sure is. That's the one right in the middle. It's talking about that orbital. So summarize, can you describe the location of an electron and the quantum model of an atom, including in terms of their quantum numbers? That, that's pretty much it. You know, it's uh, 
you know, you got n. You got from 0 up to n minus 1, right? And that's your, your L, right? You got n, L, and then ML. You got anywhere from negative L to positive L. So those are your kind of rules. All right, hope you found it helpful. See you in class. Okay, bye.